right, guys, welcome to your introduction to the rifle for the advanced marksmanship uh, class at ETSU. Uh, you guys should have already had me for basic marksmanship, and now you're going to be taking the advanced portion. Uh, the rifles you're going to be using are a little bit different than what you used in the basic class. All right, you're going to be using semi-auto rifles. Uh, two primary types of semi-auto rifles I have in the class. I have an AR-15, which is playing right here, and I also have a Ruger 1022. I'm going to show you more specifically how each of those rifles work. Before I do that, though, I'm going to beat the safety stuff into you guys again. All right, muzzle direction. All right, I'm giving you guys more freedom now, and I'm also giving you guys more responsibility. You're not only going to be responsible for yourself on the range, you're going to be responsible for each other, other advanced shooters, and you're going to be responsible for the uh, basic shooters out here. You've got to be showing them a good example. All right, muzzle direction is paramount. Primary safe direction obviously is downrange. Okay, when you are moving these guns, you pick the gun up, it stays downrange, then you can point it up, you take it back to the rifle rack. When you get when you come here and you're assuming your position, you can grab a rifle out of the rack, you keep it pointed up in the air, you make sure it's got a chamber flag in it, you take it to your position, downrange, it's sitting down on your position. Okay. So that's the only two directions you get, up and straight down range, with nobody between you and the backstop. All right, none of this sweeping around stuff. The muzzle has to stay down range at all times. You guys know that. Chamber flags in the guns, magazines out, muzzle in a safe direction. Okay, you know the safety rules. Muzzle in a safe direction, finger off the trigger, unloaded until ready to use. None of that stuff's changed for you guys. So you're going to get your rifle, got your AR. Okay, I'll show you. This one first. When you come out to the position, you're going to have a rifle rack, you're going to have a milk crate that's full of magazines for both rifles, and you've got the ammo bucket that was there last semester. So you've got your rifle, you've got your magazine that you got out of your bucket. All right. This is your standard AR 15. All right. Just like anyone you're going to find anywhere else out in the world, except for this one, only shoots 22 long rifle. You know, you can go ahead and take your chamber flag out when you're getting ready to shoot. So we're going to go ahead and take our chamber flag out. All right. The controls on this rifle on the right-hand side, if I'm a right-handed shooter and I've got my hand on the pistol grip and my finger off the trigger, as it should be, it reaches that button. Okay, that button is your magazine release. All right, if we have a magazine in the rifle and we push in on that button, it lets the magazine come out. So up, locks it in, push the button, the magazine drops out. Let's push that button right there. Okay, that's one of our primary controls on the rifle. On the other side of the rifle, on the left-hand side of the rifle, we've got a couple of controls. Now, yeah, I'm holding the rifle upside down to keep the muzzle pointed down range. Um, you've got your selector switch, which is right here. I'll point it up so you might be able to see that a little bit better. Okay, You'll see it's got a safe and a fire on it. Okay, And you've got this other button. This is your bolt release. All right. If you push in toward the rifle, or you just bump it with your hand, you can see how it, it kind of sticks out from the gun a little bit. If you push in on it, like that, you heard the bolt go forward. And see, if you look at the other side, you can see the bolt is forward now. I'm going to show you how the bolt looks if you push that button. So when I push the bolt release on the other side, you'll see it lets the bolt go forward. Now, how did I get the bolt back? We've got a device here called the charging handle this little T-shaped device. You'll see it's got a little squeezy handle on it right here. If we pull, you see you can pull back on that charging handle. You see that pulls your bolt back. Okay, so just like that. So when we pull it back, we want to lock it open. That bolt release we pushed earlier, it's got a little, little bump on the bottom of it. If we push that bump on the bottom, that locks our bolt open. And just like with the semi-auto pistol you guys used in class last semester, if you've got if the magazine is empty, it'll hold that back automatically for you. Okay, so you don't have to push that button. 
once you're loading though, you're going to put your full magazine into the gun once you've loaded the magazine, which I'll show you here in just a second. And then you hit that bolt release and the gun's loaded and ready to go. And then you shoot whatever stage, which we'll talk about that here in just a second. I'm going to show you right quick how to fill up a magazine. So we're going to lock our bolt open, charge and handle, go back, we're locked, push our charge and handle back forward so it's seated. Put our chamber flag in. You guys know how that stuff works. Take our magazine out. Okay, I'm gonna set the rifle down. Carrying it, muzzle up, down range, set it down. The magazine. It's similar to that Ruger uh, pistol that you guys used last semester in that it's got a thumb stud on the side. Right? And, and that thumb stud's actually on both sides of this magazine. So we're gonna pull down on that thumb stud and we have a notch at the top similar to the, that Ruger mag. All right, so when we put a, a cartridge in, it'll just drop right down into the magazine. Okay, so we pull down on that thumb stud, put the base of that cartridge right in that notch, and it just falls right down in, just like that. All right, and however many rounds you need. Typically, you'll need 10 in this class. All right, All right so that's the AR. Now let's look at the, the Ruger rifle. 1022. That was the one that has a wooden stock. And we have a couple of different types of magazines for this rifle. Alright, I'll show you both of those here in just a second. Alright, so we're going to take the chamber flag out. Now, I actually have two different kinds of rifles here. I'm going to actually get the other. Here. Okay. Take the chamber flag out. Now, you can see on the bottom here, we've got a, a stick. Okay, that stick is our magazine release. And you can see the bolt, the bolt handle is up here. Okay, it's just like the bolt on that uh, pistol that you guys had, or the, the one on the AR as well. This one, if you pull back on the bolt and let go, it goes forward. If we need to lock it open, let's see if we can see here. There's a little grooved lever right here, okay? So if we pull back on the bolt handle and push, push up on that little grooved lever, that locks our bolt handle open so we can put our chamber flag in. Now, the magazines, I've got two different kinds of magazines. I've got two different kinds of magazines. Um, one looks like this, and one looks like this. All right. To put them both in, what you're going to do, the pink one, the tail goes forward on it, and you just push it up into the rifle until you, you feel it click. To get it out, that's what that stick is for. So we push forward on that stick, that lets the magazine fall out. Okay. The, the flat one, same thing. Okay, you'll look at it, you'll see there's a little round area on the magazine up here. It's a little bit round there. That's where the, the bullet side would go. Alright, so you can see the bullet would go that way. Obviously, the bullets go toward the muzzle. Alright, so always when you're putting a magazine in a gun, that's what you want to see. Bullets go toward the muzzle. So, I'm going to take that out since I'm just playing right now. All right, but we're going to put that magazine in the rifle, and it's going to be flush. That's one of the reasons you may want to use the wooden rifle over the, the AR or to use the pink magazine. That flush magazine right there, when you're using the sling with this rifle, and I'm going to go ahead and show you guys how the sling works on this. All right, this is a two-point sling. You guys were used to using the one-point sling before. On this two-point sling, you're going to put your arm all the way through the sling like that, okay, all the way through the sling like that, and then rack. So put your arm through the sling all the way up to your armpit, and then wrap over and under just like we did with that loop sling on the uh, inches rod. Okay, it works the same way with the uh, uh, AR. I've got slings for those too. So that's all you have to remember. 
And instead of using a loop sling, this two point sling, just like a hunting sling you would use, put your arm all the way through, then wrap like you did with the loop sling. Okay, and then you can get some support out of the sling. Same kind of tension we were looking at before. All right. Uh, with that flush magazine, whenever we do that, the magazine doesn't get in our way. All right, when we're using a, a gun that has an extended magazine, that gets in our way. All right, so you may want to use that, but it's personal preference. It's completely up to you. So I'm going to push that little stick. It's going to let my magazine fall out. Okay, I'm going to pause this.